Good health to all from Rexall. Yes, it's Sunday. Time for the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show. Presented by the makers of Rexall Drug Products and your Rexall Family Druggist. Good evening. This is your Rexall Family Druggist, taking a little time from behind the prescription counter this Sunday evening to speak for all 10,000 of us. The 10,000 independent druggists who have added the word Rexall to our own store names. You can always tell us by the orange and blue Rexall sign in our windows. The sign means that we carry the 2,000 or more drug products made by the Rexall Drug Company. They range all the way from aspirin to penicillin, and they're as fine and pure and dependable as science can make them. We independent druggists recommend them to our customers because we know you can depend on any drug product that bears the name Rexall. Good health to all from Rexall. And now your Rexall family druggist brings you the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show, written by Ray Singer and Dick Chevrolet, with Elliot Lewis, Walter Tetley, Robert North, Janine Roos, Anne Whitfield, Walter Scharf and his music, and starring Alice Faye and Phil Harris. <laughs> this morning, there was a little excitement in the Harris household. Alice and Phil were in the kitchen, just finishing breakfast, when an excited William burst in on them. Uh, Alice, it's so exciting, I don't know how to tell you. I... Oh, it's got me all a flutter. Well, calm down, Willie. Take it easy. Yeah, simmer down, books. You're getting your glasses all steamed up. <laughs> now, take it easy. What's with you? I have wonderful news. Romance has come into my life. I'm going to become engaged. <laughs> oh, now, Willie... Isn't it rather sudden? I never expected this. I did. I knew it was going to happen when he caught the bouquet at Betty Sharp's wedding. <laughs> well, William, I didn't even know you were going steady with a girl. Who is she? Miss O'Connor. She's my assistant in the bookkeeping department at Rexall. Uh, Philip Metha. Phil, what does she look like? Like the kind of a girl who'd go out with a guy like Willie. <laughs> attractive little Irish girl. Oh, Irish, is it? <laughs> Faith, and what does little Colleen look like, Philip? Well, Makushla. <laughs> well, look, honey, she's kind of hard to describe. Um, uh, do you know that song, A Little Bit of Heaven Fell From Out the Sky One Day? Yes. Well, when it fell, it must have hit her right in the kisser. <laughs> You've only known this girl a few weeks. Surely you're not serious about being engaged. Oh, but I am. I even bought the engagement ring. Here it is. Isn't it a beautiful ring? Yeah, and look, there's a place for a stone, too. <laughs> well, it has a stone. It may be small, but it's a beauty. Alice, don't you think this is a beautiful diamond? <laughs> well, what do you think of the diamond? Don't give me a chance. I haven't found it yet. <laughs> I think it's awfully small, Willie. Well, I could have gotten a larger one, but I don't believe in a vulgar display of jewelry. Oh, in other words, you don't believe in being ostentatious. <laughs> what was that last word? Ostentatious, capital A-U-S-T-I-N, and you take it from there. <laughs> the word is ostentatious, and I doubt if you even know what it means. Know what it means? Are you kidding, Clyde? <laughs> ostentatious. It's a French word, meaning why spend a lot of cabbage for a ring when you can get the same thing for a nickel out of an iron claw machine. <laughs> you know, when you might like to meet your girlfriend before you get engaged, why don't you bring her over here tonight? Well, splendid, Alice. We'll, we'll announce our engagement from here. Uh, by the way, do you mind if I leave the ring with you for safekeeping? I paid $42.98 for it, and I don't want to lose it. You paid all of $42.98 for a diamond ring? My, what a horrendous price. <laughs> Give it to me, Willie. I'll take care of it. Well, got it with your life, Philip. Well, I'll run along now and see you tonight. Oh, to think that at last I have found romance. 
I'm just a vagabond lover. And I'm a dream girl, it seems. Oh, no. The Rudy Valley of Encino. <laughs> oh, don't make fun of him, Phil. He's so happy about the whole thing. Gee, I hope nothing happens to break up his romance with Miss O'Connor. What if it does? Willie can get another girl. There are plenty of fish on the beach. You mean in the sea? On the beach. When he gets them, they're washed up. <laughs> now, look, honey, I don't Mommy, mind him... We just saw Uncle William, and he was singing. What's the matter with him? Yeah, what's cooking with old vagabond lover? <laughs> he looks sick. If you had a voice like his, you'd look sick, too. <laughs> now, Phil, please. Girls, your Uncle William is in love. He's going to get engaged to be married. What's engaged? It's the ether before the operation. <laughs> That's a nice romantic explanation. Now, look, children. An engagement is when a man asks a woman to marry him. Like, well, just like when your daddy asked me to become his wife. Oh, I'll never forget his proposal. Mommy, how did daddy proposal to you? Oh. Well, honey, he was very romantic. He got down on his knees and said, Blondie, this is your big chance. <laughs> Can I put the lug on you for two bucks for a marriage license? <laughs> yeah, and your mother was smart enough to take advantage of a golden opportunity. <laughs> no, but all kidding aside, Alice, uh, how did you know that I was in love with you. That was easy, Phil. A little bird told me that you loved me. That you loved me. And I believe that you do. That you do. This little bird also told me I was falling. Really falling. Falling for no one but you. None but you. There's no use denying. I might as well confess Of all the boys I know, dear I'm sure I love you best A little bird told me that you love me That you love me And I believe that it's true A little bird told me we'll be married And I believe that it's true this little bird also told me when we marry We'll have a pretty cottage not too far All fenced in like a movie star Great Dane Pup will call him Ace Lying there by the fireplace Goldfish pond and a wishing well Everything is gonna turn out swell A little bird told her she'd be married do, 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 do. And we believe that is true his little bird also told her when she married We'll be the proudest couple in the land We go through life hand in hand Oops. Have a ranch way out west Pick the spot that we love the best A peachy keen and all is well Everything is gonna turn out swell And this is true we know A little bird he told Oh, I love that little boy. Well, come along, girls. I want you to get ready for Sunday school. And Phil, Phil, please put Willie's ring away someplace. Okay, okay, I'll put it away. I'll put it away. <laughs> Bet this thing's going <laughs> Pretty way if you bring something. I bet this thing's gonna look awful silly on a girl's hand. I'm gonna slip it on my finger just to see how silly it does look. Fine ring. How any guy'd have the nerve to give a ring like this to a girl. Hi, Curly. Oh, oh. Hello, Frankie. Alice told me you were in the kitchen and I were. <laughs> What you got on your finger? An engagement ring? <laughs> oh. 
May I throw you a linen shower? <laughs> All right, Remley, cut it. I ain't no mood for comedy. Cut it out. Wish somebody give me an engagement ring. I said cut it out. <laughs> Always a bridesmaid, never a bride. <laughs> Take it easy for a minute, will you? Mm -hmm. This is Willie's engagement ring, and I'm just holding it for him. Willie's getting engaged? Yeah. To what? <laughs> to a girl. At least I think she is. <laughs> She's got a girl's name. What's he want to get engaged for? That could lead to something incurable, like marriage. <laughs> and what's wrong with marriage? You don't even know what marriage is. Ah, but I do, my friend. <laughs> Marriage is like a boat with red sails. Now, what does that mean? How should I know? What am I, a philosopher or something? <laughs> That's the trouble with single guys like you. You laugh at marriage. Laugh. Wouldn't do you no harm to find a nice girl and settle down. Why should I? This way I can play the field and go out with a different girl every night. But, Ramley, having a wife is a guaranteed investment for the future. Why buy an oil well when there's a gas station on every corner? <laughs> I can't understand you. What's the matter with you, Remley? What are you thinking about? Wouldn't you like to settle down and have a family? Well, that I might like. <laughs> I knew you were a softy. Just think, Frankie. Hmm? Just think. You get married, buy a nice home in the country, and after a year or two, you hear the patter of little feet running around the house. Just feet, no babies? <laughs> I give up. Forget about it. Okay. Well, wait a minute. I better take Willie. Hey, Remley. Come on. That Willie's ring is stuck on my finger, and I can't get it off. Won't come off. What am I going to do? Guess you'll just have to marry Willie. <laughs> I'll cut my finger off first. <laughs> hey, I know. What? I get it. I'll go over to the sink and rub a little soap on it. It'll slip right off. You want me to help you, Curly? I'll pull the ring oh, off. Oh, no, you don't. Stop right there. Every time you help me do something, I wind up behind the eight ball. You'd probably drop it down the drain. I'll take it off myself. All right. Rub it a little. Coming off. Mm -hmm. I'm getting it. Oh, no, down the drain. <laughs> oh. Took you two bounces to get it in. I could have done it in one. <laughs> Frankie, will you be serious a minute? I got to get that ring out of that pipe. Willie's supposed to give it to his girl tonight. Unless that dame's a plumber, she ain't going to get engaged. <laughs> Uh, you ought to be ashamed of yourself, Curly. Dropping that poor girl's ring down the drain and she hasn't even seen it yet. Hey, I better call her and tell her to hurry over to the corner of 5th and Main. What for? So she can lift the manhole cover and get a glimpse of it as the ring floats by. <laughs> what a romantic way to get engaged. <laughs> oh, Curly, it can't float away. It's probably stuck in the trap at the bottom of the sink. Yeah, that's right, that little thing in it. No curve. Sure. Job. All we got to do is take the trap off. That's it. Hey, let's go get my wrench. Hmm. I don't know. I get into more trouble than Elmer. I'd ask you who Elmer is, but I know it would only lead to a song. <laughs> well, it's going to lead to one anyway. <laughs> Now Elmer Jones arose at dawn and put his hunting britches on Then looked up at the shotgun on the wall He made his mind up then and there to bag himself a hunk of bear At hunting he had plenty on the ball He milked the cow and fed the hog Then kissed his wife and called the dog Picked up his gun and started on his quest He crossed the creek and hit the trees Threw back his head and sniffed the breeze Let out a yell and pounded on his chest Here comes Elmer, Elmer's got his gun here comes Elmer, run, bear, run. He hunted all the morning through, but not a bear came into view while Elmer's thoughts were on the kitchen range. For he was sick as he could be of lamb and chicken fricassee and craved a mess of bear meat for a change. 
Poor Elmer's mind was in a fog. He paused and sat down on a log to get his faculties back in the groove. He heard a noise, and standing there before him was a grizzly bear and thought it time that he'd better make his move. Here comes Elmer. Elmer's got his gun. Here comes Elmer. Run, bear, run. He grabbed his gun and turned around, but Mr. Bear just stood his ground, and Elmer said, it's either me or thou. Gun refused to go, and so he knew that somebody had to go and said, Farewell, I'm leaving as of now. Then Elmer's shoulders sprouted wings, his feet developed inner springs. To linger longer, he was disinclined. He ran so fast through muck and mire, his ankles set his socks afire, and still that bear kept coming on by. Here comes Elmer, Elmer's got his gun. Here comes Elmer, run, bear, run. A deer with antlers eight feet wide got in the way of Elmer's stride as both of them went heading for the brush. Then Elmer said, now listen, son, if that's the fastest you can run, move over, because I'm really in a rush. The bear was gaining inch by inch and finally reached out for the clinch as Elmer saw the fence around his place. He leaped the fence and landed hard, jumped 60 feet across the yard and slammed the kitchen door in Bruins' face. Here comes Elmer, Elmer's got his gun. Here comes Elmer, run, bear, run. The bear was trying to get inside while Elmer sought a place to hide, and Mrs. Jones began to pull her hair. She said, this fuss has got to stop. Why don't you let the matter drop? And Elmer said, honey, go tell it to the bear. Then Elmer's wife said, listen, goon, how come you think you're Daniel Boone whose appetite on bear meat used to thrive? He said, honey, I'm sure that you're aware that Daniel always killed his bear, but I done brought this baby home alive. Here comes Elmer. Elmer's got his gun. Here comes Elmer. Run, bear, That's a very interesting tale. <laughs> <laughs> now shall we take the trap off? Okay, funny man, just give me that wrench and I'll Phil! get out. Phil, did you put... What are you doing with that wrench? Well, I, I got to take the trap off of the sink. Uh, um, uh, Willie's ring is down the drain. <laughs> oh, no. How did it get down there? Um, I couldn't say. <laughs> I could. Curly dropped it down. <laughs> Francis Waldo. <laughs> you have snitched again. <laughs> well, honey, we Phil, can... how do you do these things? Now, look, we've got to get that ring out of the drain before William comes over with his girl. I'll call a plumber. We don't need no plumber. All Frankie and me has to do is just remove that little trap. Now, now, wait a minute. You fellas know what you're doing? Alicia... <laughs> Lee, to get the trap off, all we have to do is bend this elbow. Yes, but do you know how? <laughs> hey, hey, did you hear that, Frankie? Do we know how to bend an elbow? <laughs> yeah. Alice, you're looking at two of the most experienced elbow benders in the country. <laughs> You know how? Oh. <laughs> I don't know. I'm a little worried. Something tells me I shouldn't let you do this. But we have to get that ring back. Now, go ahead. But be careful. And don't get any water on my kitchen floor. Don't get any water on my kitchen floor. Don't get any water on my kitchen floor. <laughs> Always happens. nagging us, Curl. Her father's a policeman. I told you. <laughs> don't get any water on the kitchen floor. Nag, 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 nag. nag. Sometimes I wonder why we ever married that woman. <laughs> we know what we're doing. Every minute. <laughs> now, come on, Remley, let's get at that pipe. Right. Hmm. What's the matter? Hey, look under there. Let me see. There are four pipes under there. Four? Yeah. Which one do we take out, Remley? I don't know. <laughs> let's be on a safe side and take them all out. <laughs> Hand me the hammer, I'll loosen them up. Here.
Oh, Remley, why do I always listen to you? When will I ever learn? <laughs> Stop sitting there beefing. Swim over here and help me. You can help yourself. I ain't getting off of this refrigerator. <laughs> Look at that water. It's up to your waist. So we got the kitchen a little damp. A little damp. <laughs> We got the ring out of the pipe, didn't we? Yeah. When the water rushed out, we heard it fall on the floor, but we haven't found it yet. Been looking for it for an hour. Be patient. Oh, patient, he said. You keep looking, you'll find it. Go ahead, dive in again. <laughs> this time, try a jackknife. You get more depth. Look, will you cut out the clowning? I told you we got to find the ring. I got an idea. Let's open the door to the hole and let the water run out. Then we'll be able to find the ring. Oh, no, you don't. We're not going to flood the whole house. Don't touch that door. If anybody should open that door, hey, they ain't... Hey, everybody, I'm putting the groceries... Hey, leave them out in the hall, Julius. Don't come in here. Don't open the door. Why not? What are you guys up to now? I'm coming out <laughs> What are you doing? Look at him go down the hall. <laughs> yeah, he looks like a salmon swimming upstream. Help! Help! Run for your lives, everybody in the damn place! Who opened the dike? Be quiet, will you? Do you want Alice to come down here? Be quiet, he says. They're trying to drown me and they want me to be quiet. <laughs> you not to open that door. How was I to know you got a reservoir in your kitchen? <laughs> Next time I make a delivery here, I'm coming to the submarine. <laughs> this house is the darndest place to... Uh, uh. Kid, you got some seal blood in you? Uh, uh, I swallowed something. Do something. Uh, There's something stuck in my windpipe and it stopped up. Stopped up, huh? Uh, yeah. Help me, you guys. Help me. All right, all right. Hand me that plunger, Curly. That's right, that kid's right, Frankie. What do you want to do, exfixinate him? You can't do that. If that pipe stopped up, there's only one thing to do. Here, Julius, drink this. What is it? Drano. <laughs> now, hurry, go ahead, drink it, kid. Now, drink it, bottoms up. No, fun. Whatever it was that stuck in my throat, I just swallowed it. Well, then, good. Now, leave us alone, will you? We got to look for a ring. I've been looking, Curly. I looked all over the floor. I can't find it anywhere. Well, it must be here. We heard it drop. The floor just didn't open it up and swallow it. How could it get out of the... <laughs> Swallow? Say, um... Seal face. <laughs> that, uh, that, that thing you swallowed, Julius, uh... Uh, what did it feel like? Kind of round and hard. Oh, no. Oh, no, he swallowed the ring. How are we going to get it, Frankie? There's only one way we can get it out. You mean? <laughs> Prepare for surgery, Dr. Howard. Hey, that sounds like fun. Huh? <laughs> Lie down, Julius. Get your mitts off of me, you <laughs> Don't touch me, Julius. You'll make me unsterile. <laughs> Take it easy, kid. This ain't gonna hurt. Of course not, my lad. Just relax. 
Remember, you're in the capable hands of Dr. Harris, your friendly credit stomach surgeon. <laughs> you don't have a thing to worry about, Julius. Shall we proceed? Would you like to make the incision, Dr. Harris? No, thank you. You may do the carving. <laughs> Very well. A little white meat, please. <laughs> Not too much cranberry sauce. Joking. You swallowed Willie's engagement ring and we gotta get it. Yeah, because he's supposed to give it to his girl tonight. If we don't get it out of you, it's gonna break up their romance. Now, you're not gonna be an old meanie and refuse to let us operate on you, are you? Oh, perish the thought. <laughs> Never let it be said that my stomach stood in the way of true love. <laughs> Good boy, Julius. Then you let us do it? You let us operate on you? Go plug up the hole in your head! <laughs> What have you and Frankie done now? The hall is soaked. And Alice told me what you did with my ring. Where is it, Philip? Well, you see, Julius had the ring and... Philip, he... stop stalling. <laughs> Miss O'Connor's promised to marry me as soon as I give her the ring. But, Willie, it's going to take a little time and I... I get... won't wait. I can't get married without that ring and I want to get married now. Right now? Now. <laughs> well, in that case, Willie, there's only one thing to do. Give me your hand. Give me your hand. Philip, wh why are you placing my, my hand on Julius's stomach? Quiet. <laughs> Dearly beloved, we are gathered here to join these two in matrimony. Philip, stop that. Stop I now that pronounce right. you man and abdomen. <laughs> Congratulations. Phil. Now look, Phil, you're acting like a madman. What's going on oh, here? Oh, honey, Julius swallowed the ring. He swallowed my ring? Julius, you come with me. We're going to see a doctor. Okay, goodbye, everybody. So long, kid. Hey, kid. You make a nice-looking couple. Yeah. Just think, part of me is now Mrs. William Emerson Fay. <laughs> Ooh, what a nauseating thought. <laughs> <laughs> And now, here's your Rexall family druggist. Every once in a while, we Rexall family druggists are asked this important question. Why is a Rexall druggist different from any other? Well, ma'am, the main difference is we were selected to carry the 2,000 or more drug products made by the Rexall Drug Company, and we take pride in recommending them to our customers. Well, they must be pretty fine products if druggists recommend them. You've hit the nail exactly on the head, ma'am. Let me give you an example of why we recommend them. Did you know, for instance, that drug products in tablet form should contain little or no moisture? No, I didn't know that. Well, it's true. And that's why in Rexall's laboratories, there's a special apparatus that can detect as little as one one thousandth of one percent of moisture. Before certain drug tablets are considered good enough to wear the Rexall label, they must meet their maximum moisture allowance as determined by this exacting machine. Well, I'd say that's being pretty careful. And I agree with you, ma'am. And we Rexall druggists know that all Rexall drug products get the same kind of painstaking scientific testing and get it over and over again. That's why in every drugstore with the orange and blue Rexall sign in the window, there's an independent druggist who will tell you you can depend on any drug product that bears the name Rexall. Good health to all from Rexall. Horace, you did a wonderful job, and don't forget, everybody, to stay tuned to this station for Fred Allen. Good night, everybody. Thank you. This is Bill Foreman wishing good health to all from Rexall. This is M. His name is Titus Moody, Bob. I just want to say that there's a fellow coming on the air who is comical as all get out. Yes, sir, this man has real snappy stuff, wholesale and retail. His name is Fred Allen. So just sit there and listen to NBC, the whole darn national broadcasting company. Mm -hmm.